Wilson's record of 14 threes in a game, and he said, that's gettable, Vince Carter. I mean, well, it's tough. Let's talk about this. First of all, they're talking like this is these are two-point shots they're, they're taking. These are three-point shots they're taking. Talk about it's gettable. And that's what's amazing about uh, you know Steph Curry as well as Klay Thompson because these guys have the ability to shoot the three-point shot like they're shooting mid-range two-point shots. And in my opinion, 14 is gettable. <laughs> 14 gettable for you, Zach? Why not? You're gonna doubt Steph Curry? No, if I'm asking for you. Tanking, for you. He might have got. He might have got. He might have got it last. Oh, for me, no. 14 is not gonna go for me. Maybe like eight. Maybe eight. <laughs> There we go. Well, let's put you out there. We'll find out. Welcome to The Jump. I am Rachel Nichols, indeed, with Vince Carter and the host of The Low Podcast. I can't do it. The Low Post Podcast, Zach Lowe. I was trying to get your pause in there, Zach, and it's just, you know, (laughs) not there. I'll just default to the future Hall of Famer. Guys, coming up, we are going to be talking about all kinds of stuff, including LaMarcus Aldridge retiring suddenly today, citing health concerns. We'll reflect on his career in just a minute. But first, and bear with us here, not all the equipment in the studio is working, but the show is going to go on. We are going to be talking about all sorts of things on this show. we got to start, though, with Luca Magic. It's not exactly up there as a nickname, guys, with catchphrases like the Iceman, nicknames like the truth, shout out Paul, the answer, things like that. But, you know, when Luca played in Europe, fans called him Wonder Boy, which I don't know. He's definitely a grown man. I will give him that. I'm not sure that one works anymore either. So if you've owned a phone, you've seen the shot we're going to be talking about in this show. Oh my, though, it is worth watching again. Check the circumstances here. The Grizzlies were the ones ahead in this game, up five with just more than a minute on the clock. By the time Luca took the inbound with just 1.8 seconds left, Memphis was still up two, right? And that's when Luca did this got to get it in here's luca gets it away it's gone a Doncic dagger he went to the three as he was stumbling he somehow got it to go yeah from his foot through insane traffic just ridiculous here luca's teammates of course went bonkers afterward jalen brunson doing a water sneak attack that's not nice (laughs) and the internet nearly broke lebron steph dame even des bryant chimed in afterward in the locker room the mavs gave luca not just the game ball but also a wrestling style belt that the team awards for the best defensive player in every win now Dorian Finney-Smith joked with Luca afterward that he didn't deserve it because he only had two steals. But gosh, Luca clearly thrilled for winning it for the first time in his Mavs career. He brought the belt to his post-game press conference. And honestly, can you blame the coaching staff for wanting to reward him just a little bit more? In truth, after that shot, they could have just won around the arena, given him everything that was not nailed down. Uh, look at Rick Carlisle. Here's what he had to say after the game. This is just a, you know, this is one of those joyous, joyous nights, you know, where where we, uh, you know, we we escaped, you know, we we had Houdini. I can't tell you how many thousand dollars I've lost to him on half court shots. Um, you know, one time in Mexico City, our second year, you know, I I paid him off in pesos because I was so pissed about it. Um, and I don't bet. I don't bet with them anymore. That is a smart move, Rick Carlisle. I, I mean, it's amazing, and I know what he's talking about, right? Just this past Monday night, we saw him doing that soccer-style shot before the Mavericks game, where he flipped it with his feet and then took that impossible angle. I think we have the video. Just that impossible angle from the side in the arena. Woo! Luca does, he just doesn't do this in practice though. He saves a lot of these in the game. Since he entered the league, no one else in the NBA has hit more tying or go ahead three pointers in the clutch. This was against Portland. That was just insane, right? From his rookie year. You got the playoff shot in the bubble versus the Clippers. Oh, I'll take that, thank you. (laughs) Or from this season, we all remember that three against Boston. 
just absolutely crazy. And every time Luca makes one of those shots, he's pretty modest about it. He called what he did last night, quote, lucky. He said he couldn't even see the basket when the ball left his hands. That I buy, by the way. Uh, he's clearly aware, though, of what a big deal they are. It imbues the entire team with confidence, helps paper over what, let's be honest, has been a bit of an up and down stretch for Dallas. In just this past week, there has been a round of intense scrutiny on the Luca Kristaps Porzingis relationship. Fans going to the internet and to the tape, counting how many daps they had for each other during various games. There was also the bit of controversy over the play-in game. You had both Luka Doncic say he doesn't even understand why there is a play-in tournament. He doesn't think it's fair. And then Mark Cuban came in, doubled down, despite Despite that Mark was one of the owners who voted for it. That spurred some eye rolling around the league since the Mavs were only publicly upset with the new system after, um, how do I say this delicately, falling into the seventh seed themselves. Still, last night, as soon as that ball switched through the netting, it was just like a wave of the wand, which I guess means Luca Magic is the right nickname indeed. Thank you to our control room for getting us through that segment. That was very impressive. I want to transition, I mean, look, he was the MVP favorite going into the year. And that's, I always make the point, Vince, that's just the betting, right? That's who the people in Vegas think they can get the most money on. But that was a bit of the level set or the expectation. He's not an MVP candidate right now around the league. But has he lived up to your expectations for year three? I, I tell you what, Rachel, he's been smooth sailing, though. For, uh, we watched him as soon as he got into the league. And you're like, wow, this is not your everyday rookie. He's, he's playing uh, at a different level and a different pace, which was his pace. And then he moves into his second year. You can tell he's gotten better. And he's gotten better in his third year. MVP, yeah, in the beginning. Because we were watching him in the bubble. And he was outstanding. And he's been outstanding up and down all year. But I tell you what, he's still, he's still playing at a, at a great level. Maybe not MVP level, but he's as as uh, advertised for sure. He's not going to win MVP unless something crazy happens, but he's quietly rising up the ladder. And as for meeting expectations, heck yes, he's meeting <laughs> expectations. What did people expect? He's averaging 29, 9, and 9 again. He's up to 36% from three, 40% since a really cold first 10 or so games. And there is nothing you can do with him when he gets into the paint. You can see the floater, he takes it, he makes half of them. You double him, he's thinking one step ahead, he gets into his bags of pivot moves and fakes, he kicks out to an open shooter. He is one of the best passers in the world already, if not the best passer in the world. I don't know what people expected, but yeah, he may not win MVP, but he's 21, 22 years old. For him to do what he's doing now is ridiculous, and he remains on track to be an all-time great player. I mean, when we level set, right, it's, it's not just that he's met expectations. It's that he keeps raising expectations, right? He got drafted. Despite the fact that he was picked third, there were still a lot of people around the league who thought this guy should have been number one. We think he's going to be a force. By the end of his rookie year, of course, everyone knew it. And the prediction was, hey, sometime in the next five years, he'll win an MVP. Maybe sometime in the next five to ten years, he'll win a championship. By this season, the expectation that he's made blossom through the middle of the year has been, is he on par with Larry Bird? Is that going to be what we say at the end of his career, since that comparison has been made by two of Bird's ex-teammates? So I, I just think it is amazing when we talk about expectations for Luca. All he is doing is raising the bar as we go along. And that game winner last night, Vince, I cannot imagine what it feels like to have the ball leave your hands like that with that little time on the clock, you're the one on this panel. What can you tell us about what that moment is <laughs> well, like? Let me go back and say, first of all, he's almost averaging a triple-double, uh, uh, Luca. that is. But let me tell you, uh, uh, you know, in the era of float, flotation, shooting the floater and the flotation device, so you see, <laughs> you know, you see Luca shooting it, you see Trey shooting it. Uh, I, I mean, that's, it was an amazing shot. But I tell you, the feeling of hitting the game winning shots, yeah. I think it's three parts. It's the confidence in that hey, I'm going to take this shot. And then it's midway in the air. You're like, uh, that might go in or this is going in or it's not going in. <laughs> and then the result. So we're going to talk about the result of making it. And I think that's when it goes in. That's when you see the result and, and everybody's excited about it. But I, I think there's three parts to the game because sometimes you, you could come up there and you're feeling confident. Um, let's talk about Reggie Jackson, who was in a rhythm. Reggie Jackson was in a rhythm. They got him the ball at the end of the game. He got to his spot. He knocked the shot down. And then there was a situation like Luca, who was in a, in a situation where he, I'm falling down. Let me just get it to the rim. And you'd never know what happens. But then there's situations, like I say, when a guy's in, in, his, in, his, in his bag and 
he can step into that shot and you it goes up it's like all right this is good then it halfway and you're like uh and then it goes in yes because i've been in the situation where it's like halfway when it left my hand it felt good halfway i'm like this is not going in and then the result was on the other end Ooh, i'm telling you by the way props to our producers who found video of you hitting game winners not just over your career because there's hundreds <laughs> but in a Dallas uniform, which I appreciate. Uh, appreciate absolutely. the extra touch there. I do want to switch gears, guys, because we got some very unexpected news this morning coming out of Brooklyn. LaMarcus Aldridge announcing that he is, in fact, stepping away from the game due to health.